Welcome to today's episode. I'm your host, Reed Stone. Alongside me is my co-host, Bob Foley. And our guest for this episode is Judith Nadratowski. At the end of 2017, Judith decided to take an early retirement from a management position at a New York law firm and eagerly looked forward to more time for new pursuits. However, she quickly discovered that retirement brought unexpected adjustments ones she thought she'd long conquered. Judy joins us to discuss what she has discovered during her transition, including why she decided to share her experiences through her blog, retirementcommentaries.com. In her posts, she delves into what she aptly calls the flip side of retirement, the less discussed topics that impact the shift into this life stage. Judy, welcome, glad to have you with us to share your experiences on this journey? I know from talking with you in the past that you've gone through, you know, a lot of the things that Bob and I have talked with clients about. So I know that the that the viewers will get a lot of great information and probably are thinking and feeling a lot of the same things, thoughts, um, making those same adjustments that you are. So glad yes. you're here to to share your experience. Well, thank you. Thank you, Reed and Bob. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm, I'm delighted to be here to and to talk about my story. Thank you. So, Judy, let's start with just why you decided to retire, because I think that's the kind of the thing that people confront up, you know, when they're making that decision is making that decision to retire. But the why, I think, is really important. So why did you decide to retire? And then the other part of that is how did you prepare for retirement or think that you were prepared as you were as you were making that initial transition? Yes, yes, thank you. You know, it was interesting. I was one of those people who really never thought about retirement. I loved I liked my job. I was very engaged in it. And in fact, I think I was a little afraid of retirement. I didn't like that R word. And it it just had, I think, an old meaning to me, like just being disengaged. So for me, I guess turning 60 was a little bit of a turning point. I realized, you know, you're going to have to just face this a little bit, get used to maybe planning a little down the road. Um, I, I knew I wanted to retire. I just didn't know when I would be ready to do that. So I first went to just make sure I was on fi good financial footing. I wanted to be sure my savings were c going well and I would have enough to retire and, you know, at the time that I was ready. So the first thing I did before I even thought about when or how was hire a financial advisor. And I, I have to say that was really a great experience. And I felt very enlightened just when I, I was taking control of something that felt un, uncontrollable. So I think uh, that was my first approach was to get to hear that I was on good footing and the advisor I hired was very intuitive. She almost predicted a little bit of what I was concerned about, um, my mindset of being an earner. Um, that's hard to drop, you know, it's hard to say goodbye to a paycheck on your own. And um, she helped me with that just by reminding me that my money is still going to earn money. And even though you know that logically, when you see it on paper and someone envisions all that for you, it, it starts to all click. You start to build some enthusiasm for something that I had very little enthusiasm for. So instead of seeing it as an, an inevitability, it became more of something I would choose and decide. So the decision itself, though, was something I still put on the back burner. I, she was, you know, in my camp and I was ready to work with her. But it was funny how my decision really came from a moment when a secretary who had been at our law firm, I, I worked for a law firm in New York City, who had been there since 
I think almost the founding in the late forties. And she wow. was retiring after 70 years of employment. And she was well in her nineties and had worked all her career at this job. And so that was a pretty momentous time. And a lot of people were talking about it. And even though I had had, I also worked at the same law firm all my career. So I was a little bit like her junior in a way. <laughs> and I was, although I was in a management role at that time, but she, um, a, a colleague who also had some longevity, I was now approaching like 40 years um, into my career. And, you know, I was starting, things weren't feeling quite as exciting. There was going to be a new management change. I would have to revamp my department to, you know, there's always changes you have to make. So when I, a colleague stopped by my office and we were chatting about this momentous retirement and he asked me, are you going to follow in her footsteps or is that you? And I didn't want to show it, but I felt like somebody just threw like a bucket of ice water on my head. It was like, what? And I realized after thinking about my reaction that I wasn't afraid of retiring. I was really afraid not to retire and to just by default, like stay in the same job when I'm already feeling some, you know, time for a change. So the decision to retire then um, came after I knew I would have to revamp my department. And I decided, well, why not reinvent myself now? The timing is right. It'll be a good transition. So um, that's really where it came from. Like understanding now my why was I could see something beyond my career and I knew I wanted to do new things. So it became, it, it actually, once I made that decision, I, I didn't look back. I, I put in my retirement notice and took six, six months to transition my successor, but nevertheless, I was, I was sure at that point. So, and I think this is indicative of a, a lot of people's thinking is you identified or knew that it was time for, to retire, that you needed to do something different. Yes. But during this time of planning for retirement, had you put a lot of thought into actually what comes next? Because that next chapter at age 60, as you and I have talked about, could easily last for 30 plus years of still relatively good health and wanting to do things. So had you put a lot of thought into kind of what comes next and then I that kind of leads into the ne the next question that that I'll ask you but just talk a little bit about the the planning for what comes next that non-financial because you knew you had the money right you knew it was time to make that decision right but I don't think at that point you would put a lot of planning or a lot of thought into it, it was just I've got money I want to do something different I don't know what that something different is did you just kind of say, I'll like a lot of people, I'll figure it out when I get there? Yeah, I pretty much did. I mean, I had a few yeah. ideas in mind, but yeah. I had such a, I mean, I really did have a busy work life. It took, I mean, we were offices around the globe and I was the one person responsible in my department for a lot of that. So yeah. you worked very long hours and that was, it was great when you are really getting involved in your work, but it's tiring. So yeah. I thought I really had the thinking that I needed to have the time to think about what I would do after it. I knew I wanted something else to sink into. Like that was clear to me. I knew I wasn't going to be all leisure, um, although I wanted more leisure <laughs> for sure. And I yeah. wanted to slow down. But no, I really thought I could, I needed the time to free myself of my career responsibilities to start focusing more on myself. And I had a couple of ideas that really didn't turn out very good. So my planning before my retirement on the non-financial aspects was not, it really wasn't much at all, except to say, I'll give it some thought. And um, surprisingly, they are, you, 
the things I thought I would want to do, I, I, I thought maybe I'll consult or um, they really were not clicking once I hit the, once I became a retire, retiree, my mindset was very different. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that, again, Bob and I have seen with clients that we've worked for. Your story is, you know, really consistent with what other people think about and those thoughts that they have. I, I think what's a good point to take away from, from what you have just told us is you kind of reach this point where you know a change is needed. But what we don't often know is what that what that's going to result in. And that's why some of this planning, if it takes place a few years before retirement, now you can think through the consulting opportunities. Is that something you really wanted to do? You can think about some of these other things because what ultimately happens with a lot of people is they will try different things and options one, two, and three may not be the right option. It might be right. option four, five, or six. And so you kind of need to take some time to dig into that. And that's why, you know, from your story too, if people can think about this prior to retirement and really dig into it a little bit more, oftentimes our careers, like you have said, kind of hold us back because we're so busy that we don't have time to focus on that. So let's jump into my next question, which is what has surprised you the most about retirement compared to what your initial expectations were? And what what did you really find that you were unprepared for that you maybe thought yeah. I I was pre I'm prepared for this and then you later found out nope it's completely different. Yeah, yeah, this is where the surprises really came in. I think on the pleasant side, the surprise I had was once I made the decision to leave my career, it was easier to let go than I thought it would be. Like that okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I took the time to invest in my successor and get that person transitioned, but it really, I was ready to go. And I, you know, you really didn't feel so much of a loss in that sense, because I was looking forward to doing new things. I was very excited. My goal was to do um, something different. I had done this for 40 years. I, it was time to do something different, but that was the ending part. So the new beginning part was where the surprises came in. And to me, the biggest surprise was really how uncertain I was about even what I liked, um, things I didn't know myself. And I think there's so many layers you build on when you're working, right? That um, you become, you have to perform in a different way and you have different goals and different priorities. So, I think that was to find something fulfilling became so difficult and I was extremely impatient. So that was also hard, my reactions, because I wasn't used to being uncertain. I, you know, you, you become sort of a master in your career and you thought you knew a lot about yourself. I think it was that I couldn't, the biggest surprise was that I couldn't figure out um, what, who I really, who I was underneath all this. And um, I didn't know how to even begin. And that was a very, that could be really frustrating. It can, you know, you feel lost. It's not something you really want to talk about with other people. It just was very surprising how the things, the uncertainty, um, which I really attribute to not knowing a lot of things about myself. And it became really alarming too. I, I reached a point where I felt this, if people are aware of how things will change in your, you know, how you have to shed a lot of things about your career life to build a new life, um, I think that uh, would, I, I was really frustrated and alarmed that I hadn't done that. And I thought I probably could have spent some time with some deeper thinking, which I didn't do. Why do you, th Judy, why do you think that you weren't what, able to talk to other people? Years about? You know, I think because, um, first of all, I retired a little younger than my own uh, friend group. Yeah. And I felt like they all were, uh, you know, they, they were all a little jealous. Like, you're out there, you're not working anymore, you're stress free, you know. 
But on the other hand, it feels a little embarrassing. Like, why didn't I know this? How could I not know this? So right. there's a little combination of things there where, uh, and you don't want to sound like you're whining. I mean, it, it really, if you feel, I don't want to ever indicate that it was, uh, I'm not grateful. You know, it, I felt very lucky for the opportunity. But on the other hand, I was struggling. Exactly. So you have all this pent up emotion. OK, that you, yes. you, you, that you almost, I mean, and for somebody with a 40 year career, especially in law, I mean, you're used to successes, you're used to teamwork, you're used to all, all that. And here you are now all alone. Totally. <laughs> How did you deal with that? How did you deal with that? Well, I decided that I was going to make figuring this out, which really meant figuring myself out. My yeah. new that's my new work. So I started searching the Internet to find everything I could about retirement that wasn't financial I, because I knew there was more to, I knew I couldn't be the only person doing this. And I really quickly found lots of websites and newsletters, just like yours read. I mean, some great stuff out there if you look for it, but it's not, it's not like a mainstream thinking when you're retiring, you don't think about it, right. even though there is information out there. And I started, I even found surveys that showed that I wasn't the only one in this boat, that it is, it's, it's, I won't say necessarily common, but it happens. It happens with frequency. And I think that I just decided too, that I had to look at myself as being a beginner. I was, I had to change my mindset, like stop thinking, you know, everything now it, you're starting from scratch. And that, that did help me a lot as well as all my research. Well, that's good. That's good. That's great. And, and you're right. Uh, there's no training program. Everybody looks at retirement as you reach the finish line. OK, and you go off on your retirement honeymoon, if you will. And a lot of people travel and do a lot of visit friends. People I haven't seen in years, all those things. Right. Okay? But then all of a sudden they wake up one morning and that, that Peggy, old Peggy Lee song, is that all there is? <laughs> starts playing in their head. OK. So take us through how you got through that and how you decided to do what you do now. Yeah. With, with the, well, yeah, I, I, the research I was doing, like I said, that became my job. So I decided, and I like a structure to my day. So setting up my office and I did my internet research and I checked gig boards and I joined different groups and I was just doing anything I could to be a sponge and to acquire information about retirement. And I, in fact, I even wrote a proposal to my former employer after a year that I was retired to explain what I thought they didn't know, that there's a bit of a phenomenon here about when people retire and they're in this very work-centric life. And while I was logically prepared for this jolt to be you know, starting over again, and I, I made the choice to do it in my case, um, there has to be a way to ready people better than this. And um, I'm not sure it goes on the employer side or where, but I felt I had to voice it. I felt like somebody needed to know that when you retire, there is a lot of changes and a lot of things that you need to build. So being a, I also went to see my former career coach again. I decided I needed somebody to help me sort this out. And I think getting professional help is really important. And she, you know, she, just talking, she started to pull things out for me and say, oh, well, you like talking to young people. Would you like to mentor? Would you, you know, so we started to brainstorm. So this brainstorming process was very important to me. Um, so I decided to try uh, because I wanted to help people and um, to understand this, I just, I kept my LinkedIn profile. I built up my profile, in fact, even more. I stayed, I really kept, you know, myself active in the world of being engaged without knowing yet what I would engage in. And retirement just was something that, you know, piqued my interest at this point. So I did um, start coaching classes and I did that actually during the pandemic, which was great because I was online and it kept me very active. And I, while I just, I really wanted to fo focus on retirement coaching 
And I've since come out where um, at this point, I don't think that's something I want to pursue actively, the business side of it. But I liked learning and how to ask questions in this process of brainstorming, but also to get it more out in the open. So that was really why um, I felt I had I had something to say. I felt like I had stories to tell and my own experiences. And I would always read these success stories of retirees. Like they won the, the jackpot like overnight. And I'm saying, I'm going through all these processes and I'm going through so many different mills of, of finding my way. I think people would like to hear that too. So that's really how my blog was born, that I felt I had stories to tell that no one really talked about some of the more, you know, the steps and the things that you might feel like you want some support through. So that, that really was how I came to writing because I felt I had something to say. Now, did this change your social circle? Yes. Yes. I Don't have, I met a few people who commented even on my blog. We um, commented, uh, uh, one woman in particular that um, she just recently retired. So I felt like I'm a bit of a support to her. Um, I've also uh, just stayed connected in the LinkedIn community, how I've met Reed, um, met some others uh, who are in the retirement space and, and through the Retirement Coaches Association. I've met people there. And because I just feel these are programs that are great and getting things out there, but, you know, it, it, it we're trying to just get more of, um, I, I think just more mainstream, more in people's minds before retiring. Absolutely. Read back to you. Yeah. A couple, I just wanted to bring, bring up a couple of points that you've made that I think are really important takeaways for viewers and one was you said when you were going through this process, you met with a career coach. Yes. A kind of somebody who could pull out some of these things from you, some of your interests, those sorts of things. That's what, you know, the three of us, one of the things we're trying to do is bring more awareness that there is help out there. Yes. There's an organization, the Retirement Coaches Association. There's lots of people now who have made the transition into retirement, they're starting to understand its importance. There's becoming, to me, a broader awareness of the topic, but I think that's very important. What you said was talk to somebody who, who's been through this, who knows the questions to ask, knows what to kind of pull out of you and help point people in the right direction. That's really what people that are doing retirement coaching can do for people. The other point that, it, that you made a little bit earlier and one of the things you said is, I think part of the reason it's hard for people to make the adjustment into retirement, like when you got to the end of your career and you knew that you wanted to do something new, we often in our careers, we build up this, whether it's 30 or 40 years of experience, we become very good at things. Some of those things we become good at are only because they're needed in our job. It's not necessarily because it's really something that's in us that we really are passionate about. And when we get to retirement, that is kind of the first time in a lot of people's lives where they can explore what's really important to them, what, what's, what's deep inside of them, their values, their purpose, all of these things that in their in their prior work life, maybe they didn't get a chance to develop as much. So when you get to retirement, I think that's part of why it's such a challenge for people is because it's the first time where people can really explore what they want to do, what they're good at, how they want to give back to the world, what, whatever it might be. And that's a lot different than that sometimes than that skill set we had to become good at, at our jobs to continue to have a career and to build that career and advance and, and all of those things. So I think that's a, a really critical point that you brought out too, that we have to invest the time to figure out what's important to us. What are, what are we really passionate about? What are we good at? What do we like to do? Because retirement is that kind of that time where we get to structure our time 
how we want from all the way from the morning, all the way through the workday, all the way through into the evening. Yes. Meeting, so meetings aren't scheduled for us. Projects aren't demanded of us. Mandates aren't put on us to, to create certain things. And that's where I think the challenge for um, a lot of people comes yeah. out. It's so, a bit of deprogramming sometimes, like things that you've built, you know, so much into your, um, as you say, your skill set, and yeah, they're not yeah. necessarily things you liked. Um, you you and, are good at them, but now is not the time. You know, you really have to dig, and and it does take. I I think for me, a lot of uh, I did a lot of reading. And a lot of books that talked about, like, what are your drivers? What are things that matter to yes. you? We're really yes. very enlightening. Yeah. Yeah. And I think another thing that, and I, Bob and I have talked about this too, that a lot of times people leave what they're doing. In other words, they want to put that behind them because there's something going on at their work, something that they don't like. It's just, they, they kind of realize it's time to do something different. But again, taking the time to plan and think ahead of what that what that next phase may include because a lot of people the studies i'm sure you've seen this too people retire a few years before they say they will so if people yes. tell you they'll retire at 65 the research tells us that no nope, people are retiring at 62 or 60 so it's always earlier than we think it is Sometimes we don't get to make the decision to retire, unfortunately, too. We all know people who didn't get to make that decision. Their employer made it for them. So Absolutely. it's always good to plan in advance for this because I don't think people understand the emotional, the, the psychological kind of things that go on when you, when exactly. you reach this time because there's this whole big void that we get to fill but figuring out how to fill that with something that's really meaningful to us is, is difficult. Yeah. So. And to really have a click, you know, it'll, I tried a lot of things that I thought, oh, this will, and it just didn't click because I really wasn't getting to the heart of what yeah. I, uh, what I really needed. Yeah. And it's kind of like when you said you thought about consulting, I think a lot of people when they retire, think about consulting because they were good at what they did, but what they right. realize is what they did before is not what they're passionate about now. And exactly. It's hard to kind of separate from that. You know, I think you alluded, you alluded to that too, that it takes a while to separate from what we used to be to what we are becoming and creating that, that future. And that's, Again, like you said, you kind of have to be willing to go back to being a beginner at some something in, in yeah. some ways. Yeah. And that's hard for people who've reached a certain level of success in their career because we're not used to being beginners. We're used to teaching and sharing and showing others yes. and, you know, being an expert in our field and all, all of these things. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a difficult transition for a lot of people that they don't understand. So I know you touched on this a little bit more, but I want to get back to your blog. So maybe just let's kind of revisit, you know, you got started on your blog kind of from your journey into retirement. I think you talked about, you know, what inspired you to start your blog. Are there any particular blog posts or any topics that you've written about that either have been close to you? And I know you also write on Medium, so it, it, so you've got your blog posts and your and your medium articles that you post. But is there any any topics or articles that have kind of struck a chord with either your readers or as you've been writing has really been something that has brought something out in you that has made you kind of go, aha, I think I've kind of figured out my path a little bit more. I've figured out my purpose. I figured out my meaning. So yeah. Um, I think a blog post that I particularly liked writing and that flowed very easily, um, which I, I really, I don't blog in the same way as most people. I like my writing to be, um, make sure it's as good as it can be. So I don't have a necessarily have a schedule. I just pick a topic and when it's ready to go, it's ready to go. But this one came kind of quickly for me and it was, entitled The Search for Purpose in Retirement and All That Happens in Between. 
And it was kind of my response to reading lots of articles about all the super agers and super retirees and people who were just doing everything. It felt like it just came to them overnight and everything was great. And I wanted to share my process of all the things that are in between getting you into, you know, finding that, and as I called it, my lodestar. I'll just keep following that. And um, it was, it really described the process in a way, like first to accept failures, continue your curiosity, the process of trial and error, getting help um, from people, um, you know, learning about yourself and how to do this by, for me, the hard way, just by doing it. And that was a blog post that I enjoyed writing and I did get a lot of response to. In fact, there was one um, man who wrote me, uh, who recently retired, that he was just cheering me like, yay, I'm so glad you're out there. And he was describing all the things he's been doing to build this new business he really wanted. And he um, I was just, he said, and people don't understand how sometimes how hard it is. And, and it was just great to hear from people that they felt supported. Like we're not, you know, and I had some other blog posts, one about time and sort of how I have to manage my time. Like I'm still very much, I'm, you know, it's, I'm sure people probably say retired, why are you managing time? But in order to feel like I, and connected to the world. I really feel like I need to still do that. And I have what I have like a, a weekday mindset. I have like a Monday through Friday rhythm and then a weekend rhythm. And that one resonated with a lot of people too. In fact, even one colleague of mine who's still working in the wellness space who that prompted him to say, you know, I, I don't realize all the things you have to do in retirement. And we yep. even talked about developing a program because for for as part of their wellness offerings, because yep. it, I think it started to put some life to it to people like people really understood it. Um, so those were kind of my favorites. And um, I think it's it just has as I continue to write, I see it's even though it's called retirement commentaries, it's really like just life at this point commentaries, you know, we we're very lucky to have longevity now and, and you know, to expect uh, longer lifespans. And it's, this is such still a growth period. It's, it's almost like a graduation of sorts. And I just think it, it's interesting to talk about it in a real way. Yep. Yeah. So what are, what are some of the projects or goals that you're excited about now in retirement? What's kind of your, been your path and where is your path? pointing you, um, you know, for instance, do you plan on, I'm, I'm sure you continue, you're going to continue to share articles to your, on your blog and through Medium, but is there something else that you found that, that you're excited about? You know, I, I really want to continue writing and improving my writing. Like I always feel I want my voice to come through. I think it's always has some level of a bit of humor, a little bit of mocking yourself and a little bit of, you know, hope like this is this is, you know, I it's, I don't want to sound whiny and always, you know, this is a great part of life. And these are the things sometimes that come with it. But it's great privilege too to me to be able to have this time. So it's about improving. I, I see that as growth. I kind of want to see where it takes me. That's a little bit how I am. Um and uh, to, you know, always widen my audience the way what I talk about. Um, I do love feedback. So I always love to get feedback that really just encourages me. But the other thing I, I want, I finding my this niche for myself for, for writing and continuing to grow that has been sort of filled that purpose category for me. But I want to put some attention now in some of the other categories that I put off, uh, you know, some of my, uh, I do want to look for more engagement, perhaps a volunteer project. I love doing events. Yeah. So I want to find ways to engage in that because when I was really searching, uh, you know, my work of finding this and figuring myself out, I put everything, they were just distractions. Like I couldn't deal with any of those other things. So I, I guess I, as my career coach said, I kind of 
that's the way I work. So now I can put some attention into other things. But, um, you know, to keep a balanced life is an important agenda, too. Yeah. Judith, you, you mentioned that you had a financial advisor, right? Yes. And um, did you discuss with the financial advisor any of these things that you were going through? She has read my blog. Um, okay. So <laughs> without me having to talk about it, she's learned about it. So right. she has, in the meantime, come to me because, as I said, she's great. She is very intuitive. And, yeah. um, you know, financial advisors have a huge job to keep our financiers in good order. And um, she's very uh, proactive and, and reaches out a lot. But having read that, she even asked me about, you know, I noticed she said those things you felt you were on your own. What what kind of things could I do? What could I read? What could I learn? So I think while it wasn't necessarily a, a part of her package, she's starting to think about how she can do more in that regard. So what advice do you have for the financial advisory community in general about this? You know, I think it, it would be more to the client to maybe open up about needs that you have. Yep. Um, I think uh, when your financial advisor is somebody you talk to with great frequency and they have great resources, I think that's the hard thing. We don't know sometimes where to find something and maybe reach out and ask them, could you help me with uh, trying to find someone to build a business or a retirement coach or um, I don't know, even a personality assessment, you know, sometimes it's just simple things. Um, I'm not sure that that is something they would be able to do on their own, but they might be able to have good resources and references, just like they might say, have a tax accountant for you. Um, I would certainly went to my financial advisor to find someone to help me with my taxes. So I'm just thinking as referrals and resources, um, but I never would have thought to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Read back to you. One of the things that, that I've kind of noticed from the guests that we've had on, and I was like you, Judy, when I got into the retirement coaching field, I read a lot of books. I tried to read what the research was. I tried to figure out kind of how all of this worked and what helped people make the transition. Yes. For those types of people, and I've, again, Bob and I have had a few of these people on as guests where they've had to dive into the topic head first in order to kind of dig themselves out of how they were feeling. So they, some of them wrote books, you started a blog, some, you know, people are, do a lot of reading and a lot of digging and have to kind of figure it out. There's a lot of people though, who aren't wired like that like they won't dig into the topic to kind of help dig themselves out of what they're feeling so i know that one way that people could get help is by connecting with a retirement coach so would you have any other advice for people who you know aren't kind of proactive on how to figure this out because i know the three of us have all talked about this too that the whole the whole idea of retirement coaching is still new to a lot of people. And a lot of people don't even know it exists. Yes. They don't know where to find people to help them. I can tell people there are plenty of people out there who would be willing to help. So it's just a matter of making the connection between having helping the person find the right help. I know that that's one good option. Is there anything else that you could maybe think of as as we wrap up here um, on know, ways I, for people who aren't again aren't don't kind of dig themselves out of things like that. Like they just they don't know where to turn and how to figure it out. So you know that is a hard question because I'm not sure if how if they can't dig themselves out how far they might go to research what's available. And so how can someone get the information to them? Um, I'm not, I think employers, I really do think, uh, and yeah. it depends obviously on larger employers. I think 
could do a little more just in terms of when someone is retiring or even if it's, you know, brought to them, um, just to invite them to talk to retirement coach or even people who have retired already. Um, I think there are some places, some large corporations who have their alumni communities and have people come in and speak um, to yeah. people who are considering retirement. Um, I think it just, I, I'm not sure how to, to really build that availability of the information. I think there is definitely a need for that. Um, but for people who are, don't know how to search for it, someone has to find them. And that's a hard, that's a hard answer. I, I do think employers could do a bit more education, at least provide, again, resources. I, I've often thought even governments could have sites that give some type of uh, resource yeah. information, um, but it's it's making it you know really more mainstream. Yeah, and a couple a couple of things that that I can think of to add on to that is, I think financial advisors can bring up this topic with their clients because sometimes their clients aren't going to bring out that information or are going to offer that information to their financial advisor. So I think making sure that those conversations take place. I think one of the things, maybe I'll, if you would just explain a little bit, because you and I have talked about this, about the whole wellness idea and that this one law firm in New York was offering a wellness program. And do you, do you remember yes. the details behind that? If you'd be willing yeah. to, we don't have to name the company, but just kind of say, because they believed it was important because one of their people was retiring that this whole topic became part of their wellness program. And Bob and I have talked about this too, that we think there's a place to fit these conversations into a whole wellness program. So yes. just well, kind of give a few details of what they did to, to bring this topic to their, to their attorneys and other employees of this very, very large law firm, international law, yes. law firm. I think that, Wellness is just in the forefront, you know, people and wellness, including mental health, is very much in the forefront and firms are dedicating time to that for their employees. I think it did come to forward because a couple of recent managers, I'm not sure, uh, you know, lawyers perhaps as well, but um, some professionals. One staff. was the benefit. Sorry to interrupt. I think one of them yes. was the benefit manager of benefits yes. for this law firm, and that's so right. she re she realized the importance of it, and that's kind of how it got on yes. this wellness committee's agenda, if I recall. So, yes. So I think that's one good way to bring it bring it. Yeah, and I think then you're <laughs> building, um, you know, there were seminars and people thinking about ways to actually design your retirement, but first and foremost is to bring awareness that this will happen. This, you know, I think that's the first thing. And I think that's a great space for it because that is, you, you care about your employees onboarding, but you also want to leave them with that their entire, you know, they dedicated a lot of their life and you want to be able to um, see them live a happy life. And if you can supply just some awareness and basic tools, yeah. people can take yeah. it from there. And just on your point, read about financial advisors. I agree with you. There is that dialogue all the time. So I think if people open up, um, that's an important place to, uh, and, and financial advisors, and I know mine is, they're pretty intuitive. So I think they'll probably yeah. see it in, and you uh, may even ask about some of your concerns. Perfect. That's a good place to end as we wrap up today. Are there any final thoughts, Bob or Judy, that, that you have that you'd like to leave with the audience? Well, I think for me, I would just like to say how grateful I am to have this time. And for anyone who was as fearful of, of it as me, uh, plan. Uh, and really, it, you, it's, it's great to have... Um, your own autonomy, this time, it's almost like a second chance. It's a reboot. It's really 
a wonderful thing to have. And um, I think just getting to know yourself and digging down, having the time to do that, having tools to do that, all those things are, are important and helpful. But um, I think just, just being aware of that before you start is going to be a really big help as you go forward. Um, but go forward. It's great. <laughs> and I would just add to that, Judy, is people should reach out and try to find people to help them. If they're going through this, Yes, I can, I can tell you how many times I've heard from people that have said it's been so great to have help to kind of figure out some of these, some of these things that I'm going through. So great. We'll share uh, Judy's contact information now. Let me pull up that slide. So Judy's website and her blog again is retirementcommentaries.com. She also writes on Medium and is the best way to search for you on Medium, Judy. Just they can type in. What's the best way to search on Medium? Um, you could just type in my name, or okay. if you can use that uh, that specific medium address, but just typing okay. in my name will pull it up. That'll find it. Okay, perfect. And her email, you can reach her at Judy at retirementcommentaries.com if you'd like to reach out to Judy. She is on very active on LinkedIn, so make sure to connect with her on LinkedIn and she also uh, is on X, so you can find her at Retirement Comms on X. And again, thanks, Judy, for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for watching today's episode. We'll see you next time when we continue exploring retirement and longevity planning beyond the numbers. <laughs>